welcome to the CX Green Room. Well, welcome to the CX Green Room. Where the industry's heavy hitters share their expertise and insights. Today, we're going to dive into a super interesting, relevant topic. You know, technology is vital for improving uh, experiences at scale, of course, but it's also essential to balance that approach with emphasizing human interactions. And so today, we're going to discuss how life extension incorporates innovation into its long-term strategic plans and also how it determines where, uh, which big ideas will have the most impact to its customer and employee experiences. I'm Ginger Conlin, Thought Leadership Director at Genesis. Joining me today is co-host Claire Beatty, Senior Director of Customer Advocacy. And our special guest for today is Luis Parjado, who is CIO of Life Extension. Luis, welcome. Tell us about yourself, your role, and a little bit about Life Extension. Thank you very much, uh, Ginger and Claire, for having me. And great to great to be here. Excited. Uh, well, as I just said, I'm CIO Life Extension, and uh, we are. Uh, I'm being with Life Extension for for a while, and I like to say that I'm even though the CIO, I I, I wear many hats. And uh, as a matter of fact, I started with Life Extension uh, over 20 years ago as a consultant came to, to, to the company, and I will share with, more with you guys, but uh, came to the company to, to build systems that, and, and we'll talk about it, uh, but then joined Life Extension in 2005. Um, Life Extension, uh, we like to say that we are uh, an information company that happens to, to sell products, that happens to sell supplements. Um, we are being in business for over 40 years. Um, and our focus is science and research, and, and you know we, we like to help people live longer and healthier, healthier lives. Excellent. Well, so as one of the industry's heavy hitters, a very demanding bunch, of course, and this is the CX Green Room, we know that you have a special CX Green Room item for today, which happens to be uh, coffee, one yeah. of your favorite things. Tell us a little bit about why you love coffee and your your morning ritual, coffee ritual. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm here drinking with my my coffee. Uh, I like, uh, in general, Italian culture, Italian food, and, uh, of course, uh, Italian coffee. So I, uh, not long ago, I bought myself a, an espresso machine. I like to start my day with my cappuccino. And throughout the day, I, I do... Uh, um, more like an Americano espresso and water. So, you know, that's that's always, I ever since I remember, I grew up uh, drinking coffee I'm from Costa Rica. So that's a big thing in Costa Rica. Nice. Well, yeah. it, well, in the spirit of cappuccino, I have a tea with milk, which uh, normally I drink it black, but I'm, I'm going in the, the tea version of cappuccino today. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> And I'm a Brit, so I always have a cup of tea on the go. Awesome. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much for joining us, Louise. We're delighted to have you with us in the green room today. And thank you in the audience for joining us. Um, please do use the comments and drop in any questions that you might have for Louise. We will try to flash them up on the screen and get to them as we go. Uh, so let me kick off with a question for you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your contact center environment. How do customers get in touch with you? How do they interact with you today? Give us a sense of the volume as well. Yeah, so just put things in perspective. As I said, we are being in business for over 40 years, right? And maybe give you a little bit of background. When we started the company, it, it, it started as uh, information sending direct mail health bulletins and information to our customers. Uh, that was, of course, uh, direct mail, business to business to consumers. Um, things evolve uh, and, and, and customers are starting to, to want to, you know, out of the information we were sharing with them, okay, can, where can we get these products? And then that kind of, you know, led to us starting to, to build our supplements. Uh, to this day now, 40 years later, things changed a lot. Uh, you guys seen it in the news. People are more conscious of their health. COVID made up, played a big factor. Uh, so as, when we started, actually, it was a lot of the older demographic, a lot of the 
the information we were sharing about this longevity, anti anti aging, but now it's it's it's, it's, it's you know it's a, we reach every, any customer. Um, so we're seeing a, a, a shift in, in the type of customer. We still maintain a, a, a large demographics of older customers, but younger customers as well coming to our site. Uh, things that are shifting for sure is the, we uh, we're big on the call center and, and online it started to take over and that started to happen over the years. And also direct mail is no longer the, the way we, we do business. Now we are uh, in, in many distributors, business to business. So that's also shifting uh, um, the volumes and uh, the type of customers we're getting. Yeah. Um, just, just give us a sense as well, that the size of your contact center, how many, how many staff do you have? Yeah, so Life Extension in, in, in general is, is, a, is a mid-sized organization and we are, um, we have about 200 uh, agents um, in, in two call centers in, in Florida and Vegas. Um, and we do have different, you know, type of agents. We have a, a group of agents that are handling customer care, customer service questions, but we also have some um, agents that are a, what we call them a wellness specialists. These are doctors, nurses that are uh, assisting our customers uh, in their health questions, so, uh, whether it's they, they took a blood test with, with us uh, and then we can help review those results and, and then give them uh, feedback always with, uh, uh, we advise them to work with their doctors as well. But this is a, a service that we provide for, for free to our customers. So qu quite a few sp specialists on your team. Yeah, we do have about 80, 80 wellness specialists, and, and then we have a group of uh, subject matter experts and a group of uh, customer care, customer service agents as well. Yeah, and we also have a group of, a small group of uh, a senior wellness, which are more uh, oncologists and other more specialized disciplines. So, I mean, technology obviously plays a leading part in customer experience transformation. What technologies do you feel are most exciting and have the potential to transform your business? Yeah, um, I mean, it's hard to have a conversation these days without um, talking about the big bosses of Gen AI, machine learning. And that's for sure uh, something that we're looking closely uh, we have done already work with uh, machine learning, uh, whether it's uh, a product, product recommendations, a, a leverage that to, to create a personalized experience on, online, also the, the communications that we send to the customers. That's all, uh, a lot of the things we do is driven by machine learning. Um, we are also doing some work with in our search and in, in our website to, to do AI driven content recommendations. So that's a big because I mean we do have a lot of content on the on the site, and uh, if you are reading an article, getting uh, suggestions of other articles based on your health concern or what you are interested to 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 learn, and based on what others are are reading as well. So it's a very organic way, very real way. It's not handpicked. It's it's based on again uh, your your journey on your on your health concern. Uh, for our contact center, uh, one of the things we're looking closely uh, with Gen AI, say agent assist and, and auto somatization. Um, that's something I would like to, to talk more in, in a little later, but, um, but it's definitely something that we see a lot of value for, for uh, our agents helping the customers um, with, with uh, providing con feedback of articles, information that they, they can uh, assist during that interaction, voice interaction, whether it's a, a voice or digital, digital interaction. And uh, the, the, the other thing I want to touch on is the um, automation of a, more on that customer service uh, for, for self-service uh, capabilities on our website with bots, uh, things of the nature. Those are some of the things that are we're, we're looking into closely. I think it's interesting, you know, as you talk about all of the new technologies, um, you know, that have huge potential application in your business. But obviously, you're, you know, you're a healthcare company as well, and 
needing to provide quite specialist types of advice. Um, I would have thought you'd take quite a sort of cautious approach generally to looking at how you know these these new technologies can be applied in your business. I would love to know a bit more about you know how you actually think about where you're going to try things out and the use cases, like your approach to the rollout. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we we take very seriously, of course, um, what we do, what we say, and we have a big responsibility with our customers. So. Um, Another thing is we always um, like to 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 be there for our customers uh, when they need us. So we are, for example, I didn't mention this, we're 24-7 organization. In our contact center, we don't use an IVR. We like the customers to call and 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 and, and be live with a with an agent. Um, so when we think about taking a, a technology like Gen AI, for example, and 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 deploying that, uh, we we take a very a methodical uh, approach. Uh, we like to, of course, it starts with pilots. Maybe we're going to test this technology with our digital channels first uh, before rolling this out to, to all our agents. Um, in addition, um, I, I would think um, for us, uh, given the, the type of information, when we talk about health information and, and, and recommending someone what to take or what to do, uh, it's going to be hard for us to put Gen AI, for example, in, in, in the hands of a customer, um, in, in at least in the near term. Things we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, for sure, we'd like to 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 explore with it and, and have it. I think we there's going to be a, a, a big improvement on the way we support our customers uh, for our agents. Uh, so time will tell whether we can put this in the hands of the of the customers. Um, so. Talking on the agent side and the experience they have, another approach we take when we look at a technology is um, we like to simplify the interface, simplify the systems that our agents interact with. Um, so integration uh, of these technologies is, part, is, is also part of the things we looked at. Um, we don't like to uh, give our agents a lot of tools that they have to manipulate and navigate through instead of looking to how do we merge this into our CRM system, for example, that is a, it's a very more natural uh, a experience for them. Um, so that's important. Yeah, we, we found in our, our state of CX uh, report recently, actually, those two things that you just mentioned, um, connecting systems and simplifying the agent desktop were like two among the, the top priorities that other CX leaders are looking to accomplish in the next over the next couple of years. And actually another thing that was mentioned, um, you know, companies are all along their journey uh, at various points of, of the journey towards this transformation, that, the journey that you're on as well. And a big part of that for many companies is transitioning to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your journey to the cloud, what prompted it and how you, you were sure that that was the right move for you. Yeah, um, well, I think it, it all goes back to, to that um, vision of being there for our customers, helping the customers. And that, that translates in, in technology and IT to business continuity, disaster recovery, high availability. Um, that has been something ever since I started with Life Extension, it, all very important to us, right? So cloud, of course, is, is kind of the natural evolution to that. Uh, so how, how we're going through this journey is uh, first um, started to identify up, uh, systems and applications that are that we can move to the cloud with the vendors that we have. Uh, the most uh, recent uh, migration was precisely our migration from Avaya on-prem to the Genesis cloud system. So, and as, as much as we can reduce the footprint of uh, systems on-prem to the cloud, that is, is part of this migration. Always looking for ways to integrate the systems, as you mentioned, uh, and not to compromise, I guess, the how our, either our customers interact with us or how our agents support those customers. 
Uh, and then uh, when it comes to applications that we have, our core systems, the CRM, which is a homegrown system, or e-commerce and website, um, we don't see this as a lift and shift approach where you're going to take everything that you have on-prem and just put it in the cloud. We're taking an opportunity to modernize our applications, make them cloud ready. Um, so that's the journey we're, we're going through that transition of, okay, we, 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 First, for example, we had some systems where um, uh, Windows applications, desktop applications, so we migrated those to web applications. It's still on-prem, completely changed the user experience the, of, of this application. Now the logical next step is let's move it to the cloud. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the approach and that we're taking for the cloud. Yeah, I like how it's everything is, that you're doing is so thoughtful, like and considered, you know. And I want to take a step back to the the other side of the conversation that we've been ha having, which is like the more people side. So of course you're a wellness company, and lots of companies are interested in, in customer feedback. But I feel like it, it, your company, it's it's even that much more important to connect with what your customers, what's important to them what they want to know. Um, so how are how do you go about really getting that customer feedback and making sure that you're connecting, staying connected with your, your consumers? Yeah, um, well, we do a lot of things, of course, to understand what the customers want, uh, whether those are customer surveys after a, an interaction or, or, or you know, some quizzes that we have, health quizzes that we have online, for example, understanding what are the health concerns of a customer. So it depends on what the engagement of a customer is. And so in one side, you, you have those that are just buying the product and they really don't have any more interaction with you. Uh, just with that piece of information, we, we can tell based on the products you're buying what health concerns you have. So when we send uh, information to them, we can be relevant based on those health concerns that we can infer from, from what they're buying. Uh, but then we have the other side of the spectrum where we have very engaged customers. Those are the ones mainly calling the call center, taking a blood test, having an interaction with our wellness specialists. And at that point, we, we honestly create a, a, a personal experience, a very personal experience where it's not just a one interaction, it's, it's a journey. It's, there is an, a real um, health concern or real um, reason this customer is coming to us that we 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 help them with their doctors to 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 through that journey. So throughout all this, of course, there is a lot of uh, data and understanding of what is what is behind. How do we can be relevant? Uh, the the products that we formulate are also listening not, not only what the customers are asking what opportunities we have but also the signs that we are finding uh, new novel ingredients uh, and then we our magazine we 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 have a magazine that is that one of the most important channels for us it's like the platform we have to communicate to share with the customers new findings or, or of whatever uh, health concern we are speaking about so yeah it's a very holistic approach depending on the engagement some um, unfortunately, um, a lot of the customers that buy our product, they don't know of all these services and all this content. They maybe come buy one time from us, but then they go buy online in other platforms like Amazon um, or their local vitamin store, and uh, not knowing that we have all this all this uh, content and information. I think um, I loved your answer, Louise. And I think it goes some of the way to answering um, the question that came in on the on the comments. Um, thank you for the question, Russell. A really good question. Um, you know, it's a key differentiator, customer and employee experience. Quite a big question. How has Genesis Digital and AI helped with improving the customer experience and the employee experience? And I think that if, like Louise is Maybe Luis, maybe you you take a stab at the question, and then I can I can give my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we're early in our journey with Genesis. We went live in April last year, um, but there is a lot of potential or a lot of things that we want to do. Um, I mean, maybe the, this is a, a topic I wanted to discuss, but uh, 
um, things at a, at a scale. When you think about AI, right, and then you um, think about a sentiment analysis, for example, and and, and now in our in our quality department, uh, they we used to we're still scan um, a percentage of the calls, but it's not possible to scan all the calls. Can we continue to do what we're doing, but now be able to to have a hundred percent read of what our customers' sentiment is just by looking at the data on the transcripts, but also the scoring all those uh, interactions and getting a, a, a true read. Uh, then, then that can help the uh, drive the areas of opportunity to improve that customer experience. What are the, the points of friction uh, that uh, that we might be having with our customers? With platforms like this, is is it makes it possible. Um, uh, employee experience again, we touched on that a little bit with the agent assist and auto summarization, where now you have instead of, for example, um, our wellness specialists today, they are asked to summarize the, the interaction with that customer what did the customer call about what did we recommend it and it is part of a log that we customers called back next month we know what was discussed what was recommended it, there is a lot of unfortunately distraction in when somebody's listening to a customer trying to to, to understand their concern but at the same time you know take notes right through through that conversation Freeing up our wellness specialists from from having to worry about summarizing summarizing that call and just focusing on the customer, talking to the customer, knowing that at the end they were going to have a summary that they can review, make edits, corrections if needed, and then persist to the system. That's that's a game changer. Not only the time it, it goes it is removed by 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 that automation, but also the quality of that interaction for the customer and the agent. I think just to add on, you know, from a Genesis perspective, it's always about using technology to make either the customer experience or the employee experience just more empathetic. Um, and I'll give you one tangible example about that. Uh, Genesis invests a lot in the web messaging platform, which is very different to live chat where, you know, you open a chat and you step away and it times out and it's gone forever. It's like opening a WhatsApp channel with the customer. It's always there, the transcript's there, they can get back to it, leave, they can pick it up again. It's much more natural style of communication, which is just improves customer outcomes just enormously. And I think that just is one approach, like how we really kind of try and think about the way we use technology to be empathetic to the customer. Um, even if conversations are longer, you know, it, it might stretch things out a bit. But actually, that really gets customers the outcomes that they want. So thank you very much for the question, Russell. Um, let's have time for one more. Um, you know, you're a CIO, Luis, working um, in customer experience. And I'm just curious about how much of your time is spent like really looking at the customer journey versus all of the other technology related uh, matters that you deal with. So just just curious a bit about you know your role um, in life extension. Yeah, I mean, I, I look back again, my tenure with life extension, 18 years now, I'm counting and, and we I've been involved in one way or another in so many initiatives that, uh, and, and honestly, those are the ones that are more passionate about that I like more when, when it comes to to working with our other leaders in the organization to to improve that uh, communication with our customers, whether it's deploying technology or optimizing processes. So um, ever since the first version of our CRM and website that, that is being evolved over the years. Uh, one, uh, one other, another example that, uh, that I was uh, kind of uh, really focused on is moving to uh, data driven decisions and uh, moving away. When I started life extension, IT was the source of the information is IT centric BI, right? And I wanted to change that so we turn into more self-service BI. Now, we IT is more involved in the uh, operationalization of the data, um, democratizing the data, giving the data to our power users in the different departments for them to do their own analysis. Uh, um, projects that 
would touch, for example, uh, in, in our knowledge system that we transform our internet, create a knowledge system. Our agents now use that to support every interaction with our customers. Uh, um, even things with our product development team or quality and purchasing to build a product information center. Everything about the product is in this system. So I'm looking back at all these um, initiatives that we had over the years, and I, 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 I can I can see it's been a lot of time. I don't know how much time, but it's it's been my 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 time is spent in, in customer experience and employee experience uh, initiatives and. And I think uh, Life Extension, we, we, we are doing a lot of things. Um, and I think we're doing a lot of things very well. Um, I think we are, we're, I'm looking forward to, to create uh, something we don't have today. And I'm, I'm sure the companies have it already, or may, maybe this sparks interest on some people that uh, formalizing a CX program. Uh, we do have very, good plans on with our marketing team or our operations team in the call center or whether it's the magazine but one holistic program that you know connect all these departments all these initiatives under one roof at the end of the day understanding okay how is the customer perceiving this brand what are the opportunities we have this program can lead them to technologies that that, that could support or optimizing processes or friction points or the messaging is the messaging not coming across the same way in our magazine that is on our emails uh, so having a program that can see it all from the eyes of, of a customer um, so uh, you know something I, I I look forward to 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 kind of being this in discussions and looking to to to, to put forward Oh, yeah, it's a fantastic initiative, and I'm sure a lot of uh, the other uh, indiv individuals joining will have the same challenges, like the cust so many customer owners, so many so many silos. So interesting that you're looking at something that brings that all together. Absolutely, and Luis, thank you so much for sharing your transformation journey with us today, and sharing how you're able to use technology successfully to really support customers and their, their experience and employees and their experience. So thanks again. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Please like and share today's show and we will see you next time in the CX Green Room. Thank you.